Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Listen, very serious situation that I'm finding on uh, different news things that are going on. Uh, of course, the dirty bomb. Uh, Russia has accused Ukraine of preparing a dirty bomb. How Turner brought this out. Uh, TV claimed nuclear bomb set in uh, Mykolaiv will be detonated by Ukraine to blame Russia. They go on to say television stations in both Russia and in Ukraine are broadcasting claims that a nuclear bomb is in uh, Mykolaiv, Ukraine, and will be detonated. Yet in Russia, the TV stations say this is a Ukrainian plot to blame Russia so as to get NATO to come into the war. But in Ukraine, their TV is saying it is <clears throat> Russia's bomb because Russia is losing the war. Uh, and, of course, they play. They have a segment in here. Uh, don't know Николай if you... уже находится we'll ядер, термоядерный боеприпас, вот, который э, будет предназначен для использования в качестве провокации. Uh -huh. вот. Предполагается, что взрыв этого боеприпаса значит, на фоне постоянного утверждения США и НАТО о том, что значит, Россия готовится к применению ядерного оружия, в преддверии вот этого наступления или в ходе этого наступления, для того, чтобы сказать, что вот Россия терпит поражение, не несла ядерную удар по украинским а. войскам, которые закончатся... Ну, мы про это проговаривали. Да, раз, которые раз. закончатся, значит, несколькими десятками тысяч жертв среди мирного населения, вот, позволит э, Соединенным Штатам Америки оправдать крупномасштабные ракетные удары по территории, вот, по нашим войскам в этих регионах и по территории России. То есть фактически... So as you can see, <clears throat> the situation is very uh, concerning for the Russians, and of course Ukrainians are saying it, so it'd be, it'd be concerning for either side to use a nuclear weapon, period. So I decided to do a little digging on this, and I was able to get from a different friend completely there uh, some confirmation that is there really a dirty bomb threat, and of course, is it Russia or is it Ukraine? Sadly... The information was confirmed, and yes, it was Ukraine that is preparing a DB. My next question then was, is this being done as a pretext for NATO to really to be able to enter in, and therefore NATO, uh, their allies, whether or not NATO's allies know about it, or it's just the U.S. that knows about this, but they're doing this as a pretext to be able to justify entering the war, in my analysis was uh, rendered correct correct as well. Now, keeping in mind, I'd already shared with you that we know uh, that uh, the United States is about to get ready to strike. Uh, they're, about pre they're preparing now to strike against uh, uh, Belarus in the very near future. So that's a very, very huge concern that we have going on there as well. So, the situation is very tense, and we know that NATO does plan on striking Belarus, but they really do need a real pretext to be able to do it. It's almost like a 9-11 all over again, right? You have to have a pretext to go to war, and uh, you know all you need is the right cheerleader in there to be able to get the job done. Zelensky seems to be that cheerleader. And sadly enough, I actually brought that issue up. I said that... Uh, Netanyahu was the cheerleader for the West for President Bush to be able to pull off the war that they did. And uh, I said, uh, you know, the thing was is that Bush knew he needed the conservative Christians and conservatives behind him in order to be able to have American support for a war inside of Iraq. Because clearly, if it was Saudi nationals, which we know all this is smoke and mirrors, if it was Saudi nationals, uh, then... You know, why are we going to war with Iraq? Makes no sense, right? So therefore, we have to have Netanyahu as a cheerleader to drum up the war drum uh, for an attack against Iraq, which we ended up doing. This is what's happening all over again. The only difference is now is Zelensky. Still, though, Zelensky is Jewish. And I hate to say it, but that Jewish card is being played to get Christian support for that war and ultimately to kill more Russians, more ethnic Ukrainians, which are basically ethnic Russians as well, uh, or the Slavs. As Menachem Schneerson said, they wanted to take out as many Slavs and Russians as they possibly can in a war that they would make Russians believe that they're taking back part of their own territory and in a war where they would actually say, uh, oh, gosh, no, that can't be true. Uh, 
you know, we, but we want to, we want, the Ukrainians are, are saying that they're having to fight for their lives, when in essence, they're actually going against one another. Now, I actually brought that out here by this man right here, uh, Edward Hudos, who was a Chabad member. I also was a member of this organization for more than 20 years. Uh, Edward Hudos, uh, in 1991, meets with the guru of the, uh, of the, of the, of the, of the, uh, organization, Rabbi uh, Menachem Mendel Schneerson, and he was sent back to Ukraine to, to take over parts of that country there. Uh, Edward Hudos, a former rabbi, tells you all about this. Uh, in the sensational series of books entitled Jewish Syndrome, authored Edward Hudos himself, a Jew, he is head of the Reformed Jewish community in Kharkov, Ukraine, documents his decade-long battle with the Judeo-Nazis. And the author's own words of the fanatical Hasidic sect Chabad Lebovich. According to Hudos, not only has Chabad, whose members believe their recently deceased rabbi Chaim Mendel Schneerson is the Messiah, taken over Jewish life throughout the territory of ex USSR, it's become the factual mastermind of the Putin and uh, Kuchma regimes. Chabad also aims to gain control of the U.S. by installing their man, Joseph Lieberman, in the White House. That's, of course, that's what he says. Hudo sees a Jewish hand in all the major catastrophic events of the recent history from the Chernobyl meltdown to the events of, well, you can see it right there, I won't say it, using experts from the protocols of the elders of Zion to help explain and illustrate why Hudos has also developed a theory of the third Kazaria, according to which uh, extremist Jewish elements like Chabad are attempting to turn Russia into something like that of the great Khazar Empire, which existed to the lower Volga from the 7th or the 10th centuries. Much of this may be sounded far-fetched, but as you read, the facts begin to accumulate. You begin to see the Hudos makes sense of what's happening in Russia and the world perhaps better than anyone writing today. Now, he's still alive. Uh, he's in his 70s. Uh, and this man right here, he actually became a a Christian. Uh, uh, oh gosh, I forget when. Uh, I don't know exactly when. Maybe a year or two ago there. Uh, but the man knows exactly what he's talking about. So I think it's important to know that. Now, the other issue that's going on in the news as well that I want you to be aware of is that uh, China and Russia. This particular Russian article here that appeared. Uh, says here, and I got the translation for you, China expressed its gratitude to Putin for his position on Taiwan. We have highly appreciated the position of the President Putin. I want to emphasize that the principle of one China is a universal consensus of the international community and the universal recognized basic norm of international relations. Wormbin spokesman for the Chinese Foreign Ministry said. Now, here it is right here. We have Putin on the Taiwan news, Putin claims Taiwan is part of China. No doubt, because Putin took Crimea and claimed that Crimea was part of Russia. And in essence, it really is, right? So Taiwan responds to a sovereign and independent country, not subordinate to autocratic China. And they were very upset about this, no doubt. Says Russian President Vladimir Putin on Thursday, October 27th, claimed that Taiwan is part of China, prompting the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to issue a statement saying Taiwan is a sovereign, independent country, not subordinate to an autocratic People's uh, Republic of China. During a speech on Thursday, October 27th, Putin claimed the U.S. should not have destroyed relations with China over Taiwan. He said his country recognizes Taiwan as part of China, and the visit by the uh, grandma of U.S. Speaker Nancy Pelosi to Taiwan and other trips of the U.S. officials were provocations. What are they doing? Russia and China are building an alliance. And I hate to tell you, friends, New World Order written all over everything I'm looking at, and they're going to try to bring this country down. Let's just face it. Uh, so although I see one side with Russia as a victim, but also see the other side of what we're about to be the victim of two communist nations bringing down the only uh, democratic nation, which unfortunately our democracy has done nothing but destroy other countries for its own uh, evils and ill gains of being the richest country in the world, things like that. We have monopolized and dominated the world all over. And now we're at the precipice of being overthrown by two communist nations for that, well, I guess as the old saying goes, you reap what you sow.
you reap what you sow. And it's about to come back on us there. Uh, I do believe, though, that the uh, ethnic Russians of eastern Ukraine, they do deserve their right of autonomy. I agree with that 100%. I realize that the neo-Nazis of Ukraine are doing nothing but murdering the civilians there. Uh, and, and, they're, and they are willing to use a dirty bomb against their own people. That's not the Ukrainian people, and I hope we always understand that. You, you know, there's good people both sides of this conflict in Ukraine. The Ukrainian people are not willing to go kill their own, but there is that faction of neo-Nazis. As Edward Hudos brings out in this article right here, they're saying in there of what he talks about there, the Judeo-Nazis right there. See, uh, he documents his decade-long battle with the Judeo-Nazis in the author's own words of the fanatical Hasidic sect Chabad Lubavitch group there. So who are those Judeo-Nazis? It's actually the Chabad group inside of Ukraine that is running that Nazi organization. No wonder why Israel is willing to back it, support it, and send them the weapons. No wonder why we've been able to expose that here on Israeli News Live. You know, the sad thing is, it takes other Jewish people to expose the crimes of those that say they are Jews and are really not. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for watching. Listen, thank you for your support of the broadcast here. We can't do it without you. And I sincerely ask, please, as God lays it upon your heart, support the broadcast. Above the right above my head, Stephen Benoon. You can you can donate by mail, P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. Also online. Always remember, you can always donate online. It's very simple, one click. I got a cat here, won't leave me alone, loves to be loved. Sorry about that. Anyway, if you want to say hello to the cat, this is my wife's little love here called Sasha. Her brother was killed by a wild animal. Really upset my wife a lot that that happened because he also was like her, full of love. And and it seems like after the other one died, this one became more uh, loving as well. So anyway, God bless you. Thank you for listening.